fly a single engine airplane? If you do, um, I'm sure you've thought about the turn back altitude. At what point uh, on a takeoff and you have an engine failure, do you actually turn back to the runway or you choose to land straight ahead? That's what we're going to talk about on Flywire today. Extension to the video we did a couple of weeks ago, um, try to clarify a couple of things and see actually how they work out. Stick with us on Flywire. Hi, I'm Scott Perdue, and today on Flywire, we're going to try something that I don't want you to try at home. <laughs> and uh, this is an extension of the video we did on uh, engine failure on takeoff a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this one's going to look at turn back altitude, and I'm going to do it close to the ground. I'm going to do it from the takeoff instead of above two, th two or three thousand feet above the uh, airport. That's what I'd like you to practice, uh, but I want to show how things work here and, uh, because there's been some controversy about numbers and I think people aren't actually flying them. So uh, I'm gonna check it out and we're gonna see how it works today. And I got a couple of ground rules. One is that uh, uh, I'm not planning on landing out any of these. Okay, these are all gonna be go-arounds. I just wanna see how the geometry works out. Okay, the other one is, is I'm setting a floor of 200 feet. Why? Because, well, I want to and I can. So that's what I'm gonna do because I don't want to get too close to the ground. Things, weird things can happen, and it's best just to avoid all that stuff. Okay, the other one is, is I'm not going to shut the engine down. <laughs> no freaking way I'm going to do that. Um, not on something like this, okay. Maybe at uh, 4,000 feet, 3,000 feet above the uh, airport, we can do it, but uh, not, not for stuff like this. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. Wouldn't be prudent. So, anyway, that's the profile. We're going to try VA, uh, VY climbs. Uh, we're going to try... Um, VY, uh, we're going to try VY and cruise climb uh, speeds, and we're going to try it at 500 feet, 700 feet, and then 1,000 feet. I'm not going to do VY at 1,000. I'm going to do cruise climb at 1,000. And we're going to see what the, the difference is between VY en and energy uh, from cruise climb uh, speed is. But I'm going to do it all with a three second delay because, hey, we're human, and it takes us a while uh, to have that happen. So, uh, yeah, anyway, that's the plan. That's my evil plan. I want to do this one at cruise climb because that's where I am. One potato, two potato, three potato. The winds are uh, from the right at about uh, 10 knots. At this altitude they're about 30. Alright, we're going around. 200 feet. That was cruise climb. We could make it back to the airport area, maybe. And I think a lot of that today was, uh, or that particular run, was we had a little bit of extra energy and the winds were pushing us back towards the runway so we could make it. The other thing I'm doing is uh, I'm leaving the prop where it is. You know, it's uh, full fine. Uh, not changing anything. And the primary reason for that is is uh, uh, the engine's not off. So what I found was is that if you leave the prop up, that it uh, it uh, increases your descent by about 50%. So I'm trying to compensate for the fact that uh, if the engine was stopped or or low or low RPM, we might be able to stretch our glide. This is going to be VY with a cut at 500 feet and three seconds, and we'll see what happens. Uh, the winds on the surface are from the right about 20 degrees at about 8 knots, but the winds at pattern altitude are from about the same direction at 30. So today it really pushed us back towards the runway. Just gear, positive rate, gear up. There's my target speed. Climbing like a banshee. It's pretty cold today. 200 feet. Better watch traffic ball, 429 Bravo Hotel, four miles west, or sorry, east of uh, Milton. 400 feet. 3,500 feet. VOR, three One months. potato, two potato, three potato. There's no way. There's no way. We're going around.
This one's going to be uh, VY, 700 feet AGL, turn back with three seconds, and we'll see what happens. Um, I think I got a little bit extra energy. We should be able to, given the performance of this last one, we should be able to make it to uh, back to the airport without a problem. The, uh, the first one at 500 feet, even with winds pushing it back to the runway, I don't think it was happening. I just don't think it was happening. And I'd given up all my energy in the turn, and I didn't have any options. I couldn't stay keep it the bank angle at 45 because I was uh, tickling the stall. So, uh, no, I don't think that works. <laughs> but for me, at least, all right, there's my 96. Climb like a bat out of hell. 1,500 feet per minute. 600, 700. One potato. Two Mineral potato, traffic. Three. Belmont, we can make a two mile final for three one. Mineral oil. Okay, I can make it back, maybe close to the runway. This last one, um, at 700 feet, I think we could have made it to the, to the grass. This next one is going to be uh, cruise climb, 700 feet, and a three second delay. Six hundred, seven hundred, one potato, two potato, three potato. Yeah, I'm not hitting the stall warning. I really, 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 really like that. I still have plenty of energy. All right, there's four hundred feet. Gear down. I think I can make that one. Well, let's go around. That was more better. I think one of the things that did help us out then was the wind plus the extra energy. I wasn't bumping against the stall uh, warning at, uh, at all, so I was able to increase the G and make use of that 45 degree turn. So that was good stuff. Uh, and I might have been able to make the runway. If I did, it was going to be way past midfield. And I might have, uh, I'm going to run off the end, but hey, I'm, I'm there. So that's good. I'm going to do the same uh, cruise climb, but this time we're going to come to 1,000 feet and wait three seconds. And 900. Traffic, 12 o'clock. Same feet. altitude, one mile. Two potato, three potato. Five bananas in the turn back towards the runway. All right, I screwed up my speed on that. I was at 100. All right, if you gear down now. Roger, I got you tight. I can definitely make it. Well, that was fun. BFM in the ground is a dangerous game, and frankly, I'd sure prefer having uh, afterburners instead of an IO-550 when I'm trying to get away from it. I think what we learned today was very instructive. I'm not a perfect pilot, but I have stayed in a Holiday Inn Express lately, and I think I hit the numbers pretty well. I made a few mistakes, uh, but they didn't, didn't seem to cost. Editing the video, though, I noticed a couple of important things that we need to keep in mind, okay? One is the winds today were very much in my favor. 30 knots pushing us towards the runway really helped. Could you imagine if I'd uh, turned the wrong way? Uh, there's, it would have pushed me away and there's nothing ever going to happen. So, Winds are a big factor. Keep that in mind. The OIT of 25 degrees and the climb rates in excess of 1,200 feet per minute, that helped out too, I'll be honest. Uh, but let's talk about those climb rates for a second. Think for a moment, especially the higher ones, like 1,500 feet per minute. Think for a moment what happens to your airplane when it's climbing. You got a pitch angle like this, and if you and the airplane wants to continue that vector, it's mass. For a while, you go ballistic when the engine fails, and then you you basically describe a little arc before you head down again, even if you're pushing it. Which means that sometimes I climbed another 100 feet or more at the engine cut, and conversely. 
I lost 8, 10, and even 18 knots once during the reaction time delay. That is significant, and you've got to keep that in mind. I mean, even if you're pushing quicker than three seconds, which challenges challenge you to see if you can do that. The most important thing about that ballistic vector, though, is the recovery from the exercise, because it happens at the bottom as well as the top. I set a floor of 200 feet to knock off the exercise. In every case, the airplane descended at least another 80 feet. If you tried to do this and decided to go around at 100 feet, you very, very well might hit the ground. So you see what I mean? Don't try this at home. Even with an instructor, this particular exercise is a dangerous one. Do it at altitude and extrapolate your lessons learned. Man, did you see those descent rates? <laughs> From the 500 foot cuts at the VY and cruise climb, the descent rates exceeded 1500 feet per minute. That works out to about 20 seconds, 20 seconds. That is not much time to survive here. Again, I don't want you to try this at home, but I used a uh, low level, I used to have a whole low level aerobatics waiver, so I'm sort of familiar with the environment and I wasn't scared of it. I know how to plan for it and how to operate in it. So be safe, try this at altitude, and extrapolate your experience. What observations? Well, I've got a few observations I'd like to share with you from the iterations of this impossible turn exercise. And uh, you can draw your own and tell me about it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Honestly, I honestly don't think that 500 foot turn back is a prudent maneuver. Even with 30 knot winds pushing me towards the runway, there was no way it would work out at VY. I was right on the edge of the stall and I couldn't get a turnaround quickly enough. The scent rate was astounding. The extra energy at cruise climb might get you back to the airport grass area, but hey, your mileage may vary. Uh, I suggest, though, you be very, very prudent, or proficient, sorry, uh, before using this altitude, extremely. Your turn radius is smaller at slower speed, but the turn rate is slower as well. And that is a problem that physics cannot overcome. You've got to trade energy. Everything balances out. So I like that extra energy that cruise climb speed gives me. At 700 feet AGL today, I could get back to the grass at VY. At cruise climb speed, I might have made it to the runway. Maybe, maybe. At 1,000 feet with cruise climb, I could make it back to the runway without a problem. Remember that I did this with 30 knots pushing me toward the runway. I say that over and over again because it was a huge factor. But the extra energy made a huge difference of the speed, and I was able to use that energy to make the turn at 45 degrees, I actually use the bank angle to make the turn, and then stay away from the stall warning. Using VY, thinking that a few feet of extra height will make a difference over an extra 10 knots? You'd be the judge, but in my opinion, it's a dubious proposition. I'd rather have speed every day than a little bit extra height. Remember, a little bit. You're not going to have much. Did I say that, uh, hey, did I say that the, the descent rate builds are incredibly fast? Well, I should have if I didn't. In some instances, you may not have enough energy to overcome that descent rate when you try to land. And that's one of the huge factors about doing this kind of a turn, the impossible turn, you, incre the incredible descent rates. What are, you, what are the takeaways from the impossible turn back altitude exercise? Well, one is I think that the uh, engine failure scenario, scenario uh, through, think it through, this is serious business. Tom Turner at American Bonanza Society teaches that the first decision point altitude is 400 feet. Below that altitude, you pick a spot out in front of you, and then you land there. Above that altitude, you can make a small turn, maybe 90 degrees. This is exactly what happened to me, though not at 400 feet, when my engine out on takeoff incident. Um, between 700 and 1,000 feet, you can turn up to 180 degrees, but don't expect you'll make it back to the runway unless you have favorable conditions. Don't plan on that. I mean, you've got a bad day anyway, right? But above 1,000 feet, it may be possible to land on the runway you left from, okay? But in all cases, when you pass 400 feet, let's use this. Let's set this as a real lesson learned. Level the wings and take what's in front of you. Land wings level at the slowest possible speed you can and stay under control. Or, as my hero Bob Hoover used to say, fly as far into the crash as possible. One thing about that 400-foot uh, decision point I'd like to talk about, and that's the importance of ground rush. If you hadn't heard that, <laughs> it's pretty important. If you're a human, 
you'll have a reaction time lag between the occurrence of an event like an engine failure, your perception of the incident, and then the application of the reaction. In general, the humans take approximately three seconds or more to react to something unexpected. We saw the impact of that three seconds today. Ground rush is another human factor that is a huge player here, and I, th I think we need to talk about it. The way our eyes work, we begin to perceive relative motion at about 300 feet. For something unexpected like that rapid descent rate towards that big, solid, sudden stop, most humans are going to start spinning their cognitive wheels. This is not a good time for that, but there it is. It happens. So by using a 400-foot decision point to level the wings, take your spot and land, it takes you out of that loop and directs your attention to some specific action that might save your life. Try it. You might like it. I hope you enjoyed watching the video and learned something. I know I learned a lot. In part three of the engine failure series video, I wanted to raise the idea of having a strategy to implement before your next takeoff in case your engine failed. From the reaction I got to the video and in some of the forums, I realized that I needed to make this video to show what might happen at lower turnback altitudes, to set a floor, so to speak. I still think you need to go out and practice this for yourself. Uh, at 2,000 feet above the airport or better, important safety tip. Develop your strategy. Choose a realistic turn back altitude for the impossible turn. Is it 1,000 feet? Is it 1,200 feet? Or maybe 1,500 feet? And keep that in mind for every takeoff. I modified mine. It used to be 700. I'm thinking about 1,000 at least uh, for me. So if you like that video, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell if you want notifications. Hey, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Flower.